Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Up the Guts podcast. Joining me as always is your host, Tricky, and joining me as well is my co host, Holty, who, for some reason, the headphones that wasn't working last week is magically working. It's still the same ones. It is. Oh, my God. I can hear. I can confirm that. I can hear your voice and my voice, which I like. Now, Very good. how is, uh, obviously, you're on break as well from uni. Yes, I am. Uh, currently enjoying that so far, but I don't get much work during winter as uh, horse racing season doesn't run through winter that often. Uh, get the odd few and functions Many cups, as well. What, November? Uh, November 23rd, I think. Oh, and that's two days, two days after my birthday. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah, so uh, you'll be yeah. catering to that, I'm guessing. Absolutely. That's like a that's like the must on like the cranberry catering calendar. Mm-hmm. Like for all staff, that's the must. If you can't work that, you're sacked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, holidays have been alright, but trying to get as much work as possible because there's not much. So yeah, that's all, all it's been. And uh, a couple more weeks, and I've actually got uh, JP's Bucks party coming up in a couple of weeks. Oh, so that, no. Yeah, that could be a big one. That could be a disaster. And then a couple <laughs> weeks after will be his wedding. So oh, it's coming very, 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 coming very quick. Very quick. Oh, oh, I bet she's an excited I looked at man. it. I looked at it, and I was just like, holy shit. It's only a month till his wedding. Wow. He'll be oh, a very like, nervous oh. but excited man. Well Luckily, done. he got the – I remember him explaining he got – because it's in Cockatoo – but he got one where it's outside and inside oh, yeah. covering. So in case it rains. Where did you say it was? Cockatoo. Avalon Castle or something. Cockatoo? Like yeah. Mount Dandenong's Cockatoo? Yeah, yeah, Mount Dandenong. Oh, wow. Like G- Gembril, Gembril. So it's not too bad. Not too far. Oh, wee. But That's yeah. a beautiful spot. Yeah, so he got he got one because he wanted um it to be covered in case it rains. Oh, yeah. So I was like, yeah, smart. Oh, smart. not bad. So yeah, yeah good. it should be a good, um, good week. Of the Bucks party, and then I expect you on top of tables. The wedding's on a Thursday, so I think I might take the Friday off. I think you will, (laughs) because not only that, I've got to find a way back home from Cockatoo because it says like on the invitation, Ubers don't come to the exact spot we're going. You got to go walking a little bit, so I'm going to have to try and find a lift. Or that's very dangerous. Everywhere's a um, pretty much booked out around there. Because mum, da- mum's just like, why don't you just go um one of those beds and breakfast, you know those type yeah. places. And um, I asked JP, he goes, yeah, they're all booked out. Oh my god, they're all booked out ages ago. Jeez, that's actually a disaster. Mm. You're gonna have to go walking in the middle of cockatoo. I think we got um our mate, the Cook Islander, the listener. Oh uh, he, yes. he said uh, he'll he might pick him up. He'll pick me up depending if he's working or not. Oh, because he's only narrow narrow south. Oh yes. So cockatoo is it? What, Twenty five minutes maybe. Oh wow. Do you know how dark Cockatoo gets at night? Well, yeah, I know because I've been driving in it um, for out of East Footy, remember? Oh, yeah. It is that. It gets that yeah. dark in Cockatoo at night time, and especially winter as well. It goes dark at five o'clock. Yeah, I know. You're screwed. Mm, I know. <laughs> you better take a traveller with you so you can see. Yeah, I think I think I might have to, but <laughs> let's not beat around the bush now. Uh, first of all, just like... I don't know if he listens every week. I know he listens some week, but congratulate my brother for his senior debut for Mornington yes. on the weekend and kicked a nice snag on the boundary. Oh, very good. Very good. Um, been playing lately, Holty, or and not? And who is your brother's name? Uh, Corey Dalton. Oh, very so, good. Yeah. Very good. So I congratulate him, and they got the win. But our oh. uh, former guest uh, has got penalties. The former guest, the captain coach, Josh Newman, from uh, former guest this show, has said he'll accept any penalties that comes his way or punishments on Thursday because they kicked very inaccurately, Mornington, at one oh. point. So they ended up, I think, with like tw- maybe 22 goals, 20, or 20 goals, 20. Oh. So, like, that's not too bad considering they were, I think, 6-14 at one point. Yeah. And Josh Newman, obviously a friend of the show, actually kicked three goals, six. That's pretty gross. Yeah, three goals, six he kicked. That's gross. So he's like, I'll accept any punishment that comes my way. So... But I, I think they're going to get him to do 400s back-to-back at the end of training. Nah, I'll just go straight ice bath. Yeah, so <laughs> he's got some punishments coming his way, I believe, I heard after. Um, yep. Yeah, no, no 400s, just straight ice bath for 20 minutes. Corey got soaked after the game, though. Like, in, in, yeah, in, in the huddle. Road. Water, ice, you name it, was getting thrown at him. This is before the song. Even, and then he's like, it's done. 
Then more ice gets tipped on him. It's done. <laughs> Water <laughs> spread, sprayed at him. Gatorade. He couldn't. Yeah. He couldn't get. He had to get help. Get. He was that wet. They had to help him get his shirt off because it was stuck to him. Oh my god, that is hilarious. But something that has been blowing the news, and uh, it's pretty funny actually. Oh, it's hilarious. Let's not beat around the bush. How good are these Aussies? <laughs> Stuff you, you pommies. How good is this? Oh. Do you want to take us through a bit of the first innings of the game? Or do you, do, you, do you want to start there, the game? Or do we want to start with the big issue? What do you want to do? Do you want to start with the game or? Oh, we'll go through, we'll go through the game. Mm-hmm. So the Ashes uh, second test at Lords, And we are very good at Lords, Don't we have a great record? My uncle actually went to, I don't know what day, but he went to one of the games because he's actually travelling around uh, Europe at the moment. Oh, so, yes. So, yeah, he went to one of the, the games. Fantastic. Pretty sure it was this test, was it like? No, pretty sure it was this test, yeah. Yes. Well, the great record for the Aussies at Lords continues with England winning the toss and electing to bowl, which is a great decision because it was a very green pitch for starters. So sent in to bat, the Aussies made 416 all out with Steve Smith with the highest score of 110 off 184, then followed with Travis Head with a Big 77, like huge, quick. That was Osball, if I've ever seen it. Not Baz Ball, Osball. When David Warner, welcome back just to the to high scoring out, runs. Just trying to find out what day he went to, sorry. Uh, 66 runs and then new face in the English side. His second test, Josh Tung. Very unusual action, but very quick bowler. Three for 98 off his 22 overs. And then Ollie Flogginson, three for 100. Off his 24 He actually hasn't overs. been terrible. Oh, no, not at all. He's yeah. a very accurate bowler. Can't find, sorry, but he is currently in Croatia. But I'm pretty sure he went to this test at Lords, yes. Very accurate bowler, um, Oli Flogginson. But, um, what do you think of Josh Tung? Yeah, yeah, like I said. A bit like, expensive, but. Well, like I said, unusual action. Very unusual. How's the one he got Kawaja with? Oh, that was a the first peach. innings. Yeah. And then Dave Warner's was even a peach, too. Actually, broke leg stump. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good bowler he is, and he was the quickest in that side. So um, it troubled the Aussies in the first innings. and uh, I actually raised this with, I can't say where I was, but I, a couple of people that I was around with during last week because they were yeah. cricket fans as well. You know yeah. what I'm getting at. But what do you think of Connor's comment about is Steve Smith a best batsman Australia's seen since Bradman? So I raised that with the people I was with. You get what I mean? Yep. And uh, a couple of them disagreed. They're still, on, they're still with Ricky Ponting. What, do you think Steve Smith's the best we've seen since Bradman? Nah, I'd have to say pun- punter. Punning, yep. punter. Yep. Yeah. I'd have to say what, what was Connor, Connor's reasoning was, oh, um, punter fell away a bit towards the end. He thinks Steve oh, Smith, yeah. 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 Oh, he's right there, but punter still holds the most test tons yeah. for an Australian and made more consistent runs. But, yeah, he did fall away at the end. But yeah. That was I, mean, that was con- I think that was, that was his reasoning on it because he's Smith's been consistent. He hasn't really yeah, had that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Steve Smith only beats him in just sto- um, in uh, like he'll beat Steve Smith in terms of like how quickly he's made his runs. Yeah, because what was was that thirty? How many hundreds was that f- that Smith brought up? Thirty oh, was it thirty one? I think it was. Yeah, and Some, he's, he's a little bit off. I think Ponting's. F- 42. 40, yeah, yeah, 42, yeah. Yeah, and I think he made 9,000 runs as well mm-hmm. to bring that up in that test as well. And it's not, all I'm going to say is it's not bad for a leg spinner who bats at eight and can play some shots as they described him in his four, first uh, player profile. Yes, It was a true. leg spinner who can play some, um, can play some fancy shots. That's yes. what he was listed as. <laughs> and now look at him. And then England for the first innings made 325 all out. So a bit behind the Aussies in the first innings with Ben Duckett, 98 off his 134. And then Harry Big Mouth Brook (laughs) with just a 50 to stand alone there. Then with the pick of the bowlers, I say, for the whole match. Welcome back, Mitchell Stark. Three for 88 off his 17. A bit expensive, but that's all right. Then Travis Head, welcome to the crease and grabbing the ball. Two for 17 off his seven. And then Mr. Consistent, Josh Hazelwood, with two for 71 off his 13. Bit expensive. expensive as well. A bit expensive, but it is basball, so. It is basball, correct. Second innings, Tricky? Uh, so second innings, we put up 279. Aussie making 77. 
And Stuart Broad picked up the bowlers for England with four for 65 from his 24.5. In the second innings, did we witness oh, yeah. one of the best Ashes innings that I can remember probably since Ted Inley? That, that, that ranks up with it. Even oh, though they yeah. didn't get the win. Ben Stokes, a magnific- a magnificent 155. Ben Duckett, 83. Pat Cummins took three for 69. Mitchell Stark, three for 79. Josh Hayeswood, three for 80. Now, let's take one issue at a time. The Bearstow uh, wicket. Um, well, what do you reckon it was? It was out. Do you reckon it's out? Yeah, do you? Or are you a bit, it wasn't. Sportsman like no 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 like you're fine with what we did no no absolute no I'm completely fine with it and I'm looking on both sides because I'm half English and I'm half Aussie yeah but the thing is I'm I sound like a full blown Aussie that's the thing but <laughs> um yeah it's out yeah like the ball wasn't dead um I don't know what Stokes was talking about because the umpires were not w- walking towards each other no um umpire never called uh, the legitimate rule. Towards that is the umpire has to say over to declare it dead. Yep. And what the rule states as well that Carey took it, wicket keeper, and then threw it straight away and hit the stumps. And Johnny mm. Bairstow left his crease. So I don't know what he saw at the non strikers end, but I'm guessing it was a double cheeseburger. But <laughs> unfortunate for him. He's Have you out. seen a couple of the memes that are going around? Oh. Oh, that, the, I, I did the, you see his face when he shook the player's hands? I think the, one of the best ones I've seen because this resonates like with my childhood. Because uh, Dad's not a big drinker, but when he used like when he drinks, not anymore. It's Jack Daniels now. Oh my god! But Is it it, Johnny Walking, he was a Johnny Walker <laughs> drinker. So when I saw the keep walking Johnny Bairstow, I was <laughs> like, that's, "That's like my child." So I know funny. exactly what it is. That is not bad, but yeah. In the end, it was out. Um, another mm. issue as well. Yeah, she. I'm. I'm Mitchell gonna let, Stark's catch. Uh, oh, that was oh, out. That was out. Yeah, that, you, you agree? I'm fifty fifty on that. Oh, really? I'm fifty fifty because I have seen that in uh, games that I have played in, and I've actually pointed that out. Oh God! I'm but going, what, what was the actual? I'm going. Did back. the umpire give it out, and the third umpire wanted to have a look about it? Look at it, or what happened? Well, personal story. Um, in under seventeens, I was captain for the interleague team, and I um, was on the non-strikers end. And one of the people uh, on the actually batting hit the ball as hard as he could, and it flew towards mid on. Mm-hmm. And mid on actually caught it like up like this, yep. like in front of his face, and then. He fell forward and put the ball on the ground like that. Yep. And umpire gave it out, but I'm just like, hang on a minute. How do you know he had control of it when he's just put his hand on the ground and he's just smothered the ball on the ground? And they went and talked to each other and they still set out, but I'm just like, that didn't make sense. But in Stark's scenario, he caught the ball, but he was sliding. Yeah. So he had to brace himself, but... I can understand where the umpires are coming from, but I loved Glenn McGrath's comments. <laughs> that was hilarious. What was it? Sorry. Uh, I think it was Glenn McGrath said, that is absolute rubbish. That is the worst thing I've ever seen. If England was taking that catch, it would have been out. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, but Now, yes. the other issue. Here we go. What, what, what's it called? Sorry, the walkthrough? What, what's it oh, called? The, the long room. The long, long room, sorry. Oh. The long room. And Uzi not backing and down. Li- and to listeners out there, there won't be a blow up. I'm just, just, I'm just going to be sarcastic today. I'm going to be cool, calm, collective. But this long room, they are old, privileged, just pricks, pricks. And for them to sh- chant out "cheat, cheat, cheat," oh that, just, oh yeah, well done to the home of cricket. Well done, lords. Yeah. Set home the time. of cricket. Oh, yeah, set the tone. Well done. Yeah, MCG has to be the home of cricket now. Yeah. Oh, Christ. Well done, Lords. Well done. That's my blow up. Well done. God, you're a pack of pricks. <laughs> oh, my God. You're such sore losers. And the bloke, did you see the sports bet video? They were, like, sitting in there, and you see the guy, the bloke was recording, and he was just like, wankers. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute wankers. <laughs> So, that was fucking atrocious. I'm just like, oh, jolly good chap. Well done. Well done to the home of cricket. Well done. Oh, that was a jolly good wicket. Oh, my God. They're a bunch of poms. I'm sick of them. Now, Todd Murphy comes straight back in, straight in, do you think? Uh, you'd have to. All depends what uh, 
pitch Headingley puts up, but Pat Cummins predicted it was flat. Mm-hmm. So I reckon stick with pace bowlers. So you reckon leave Murphy out and maybe bring Bowling in? Yeah, Bowling. Mm-hmm. Yep. And who are you bowling more, Head or Manus? Oh, Head. Yeah, Head can clearly. Yeah, no, I like him. Yeah, Head can clearly show. I mean, we can't rely on him for our number one spinner, but he can clearly show that he can bowl in good areas. And yeah, so why not go with him? If we have to pick a full pace bowling attack, then he can be somewhat of a backup for a spinner. If it's, mum just it tends has this, so mum just tagged me in something just then. Oh no! To have a look. Seaford Hotel, Pies fans, secure your tickets to see Magpie Inc. To Gully, Elliot, and Dane Swan. That's Dane Swan bad. And Dane Swan's hosting I it. love how it's called. I love how it's called Magpie Inc. And uh, general admission's only $49. So that's not bad. Oh, not bad. VIP is 89 which includes show, meet and greet, and yeah, a photo, get of the all, VIP. photo of all three. Or there's a Swanee Pass, nah, which includes personally signed 2010 Premiership Jumper. A sh- uh, the show entry, meet and greet, and photo with all three. Nah, I gave the VIP. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I did the VIP with Selwood and Tomahawk. Yes. And that was good. But I, I was just like, well, what's she tagged me? <laughs> that was good. Uh, now, do you... Any more issues with the Ashes? No, I don't think so. What no? Do you, no. no? Do, I'll, just brought it, I'll just brought it up. How good um Carey's glove work been, though? Oh, Connor mentioned that. And, oh, yeah, it, great, great. Is he better than Tim Payne? As pure gloveman? Yes. In his day, pain was unreal. Okay. Till, till those finger injuries. And he was an unreal yep. bat too. There we go. Put that question out on the Instagram or the TikToks. Is, Is Alex Carey better than Tim Payne or vice versa? As an all-round player or are we saying Tim? No, gloveman. Just but, as a wicket keeper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so yep. we'll clip that one up. Actually, you know what? As a batsman and a Well, keeper. no, you can't say that because I think Kerry runs rings around Payne as a batsman. Well, there's one up. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, Payne, before he had those fingers, yeah. the fingers, he was an unreal bat. Pretty sure he has a, a century to his name in a one day for Australia. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's got a one well, day. He had a, few, he had a few 50s when he played test matches. But he was a really good batsman until yeah. those injuries. I mean, Tim Payne, like, um, when did we play him last in England? Was it 19? 2019, then they came so. here. Yeah. Um, yeah. He had a very he had a couple of 50s in that 19 period mm. in the Ashes, and he batted quite well. Like when Really we nice cutter of the ball. Oh, yeah, and a cover drive too. Mm. Um, you always find the Kookaburras love to cut. People yeah. use Kookaburra bats. So I don't know what it is. Oh, I don't know, but like it's great to watch. And, and then left-handers like to go down the ground or off their pads, I find. But oh, I certainly can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely offside player for sure, but I can definitely pull one. Uh, now, I'll, we'll go into a bit of AFL talk now. I'll take the Thursday night one. I don't know if you want to talk much about the Friday night one. Because, a bit disgusting, but there was some pointers I want to put I out. I could blow up about that, but I just don't want to waste my breath. Like, uh, it was clearly visible to everybody that this was that was the worst game of AFL football ever. i just got to make sure we're still going on the laptop. But it's Thursday night, give me a second. All right, Thursday night, uh, we had Brisbane, oh, sorry, Fitzroy v. the Tigers. Uh, Fitzroy kicking 2014-134, defeating the Tigs 7-11-53. 81 point a smashing. Yes. Did you expect that? I uh, mean, I expected no. them to win. Yeah, I expected the win, but I didn't think that much. Of a smashing, I don't know about you personally. And the goal kickers for Fitzroy. Oh, I love when this Blake kicks a few. Old Joey Danaher with the five. McCartney with three. Bailey with two. Cameron with two. Hipwood with two. Neil with two as well. Archie, Berry, McKenna and Wilmot with one. Uh, you are making a lot of racket. Um, Richmond had Hopper with two, Clark, Cumberland, Rioli, Ross, and Short all with one as well. And then disposals for Fitzroy, we had consistent McCluggage uh, with 34 nine-scoring moments. And then we had Neil with his casual 34, two goals and 10 clearances. And then coming back to chase the rising star off Sheasel, Ashcroft with 27. And who, then... Who have you... Because I know you said early in the season, I said Sheasel. Sheasel, give it to him. Are you still on Sheasel? I'm Are still you Sheasel. Ashcroft? Or uh, I'm going to give you another one. Are you Mitch Owens? Mitch Owens is still eligible for the Rising Star. Sheasel. 
Still with Sheasel. Sheasel, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, I personally, I personally would consider more of an Owens or an Ashcroft now. I think I think Ashcroft took a while to get into it, but he's been a lot more consistent now. But then Owens can change the game. Okay. Uh, then for the Tigs, we have Bolter with 24 and then 10 rebounds, 50s and 10 intercepts with 773 metres gained as well. Talking points trick. And sorry about the racket, guys. I was just making sure our listeners can oh, see. Jesus. I'm just making sure the listeners can see a bit more of your beautiful face, Holty. So. It's not that great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, talking points. Uh, obviously, we just talked about the Rising Star race. Uh, Dunkley actually went to Tim Taranto after the first oh, quarter because yeah. Taranto had I I, either – it was eight or ten touches in the first quarter. And so Dunkley went to him and Dunkley finished with 20 touches yep. before being subbed out the final change. I think he just had a little bit of a mishap. There's no uh, – bit of a calf injury, but I don't think it's too bad. And Taranto had a quieter night with finishing with 21 touches. So it's obviously something they can turn to a bit more now too. Dunkley being that competitive beast and bull inside and outside and, and can run both ways, which is – Complimented their midfield really well, I think. Well, I reckon Tim Taranto's hit that stage now that he's getting comfortable with Richmond now and the way they sort of play. And I reckon he could quite change a game as well. Yep. Yep. I reckon he can do that now, how comfortable he is at Richmond. Um, I don't watch m- many Richmond games, but Richmond supporters have a crack at it. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Okay, now, did you see Lincoln McCarthy, as I said, the one match suspension for a jumper punch to Camden McIntosh? He went a bit high. Uh, extremely high. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> almost dentist. Visit. So one, do you, you, one match fair for you? Yes. Yep. And uh, just injuries, obviously. Dunkley the calf, Archie with a concussion, and short as a hamstring. Friday night. Now I'll uh, take it, and then I'll let Jesus. you if you want to. But uh, Sydney versus Geelong, fifty-four, fifty-four each a tie. Six eighteen. You kicked. Oh, it's that Sydney they kick. Did, sorry, did. and Geelong seven twelve. Yep. Campbell McDonald for the Swans kicked two each, and Papley and Park with just the one. Hawkins and Henry, Jack, um, sorry, Ollie Henry, that would be with the two. Uh, Blitzarf, Stengel, and Myers, one inch. Uh, disposals for the Swans. You had Blakey with 29, Parker with 27, and Goulden with 26 to go with his nine tackles and 698 metres gained. Tui, I thought, was really good with his 28, eight rebound 50s and 737 metres gained. Well, Myers also was very good with 27, three goal assists and seven score involvements. But talking points first is, what an awful game that was. Yeah. (laughs) I can't say. I mean, there would have been... I'm lucky I didn't have, like, objects around me, like, within a five-metre radius. Yep. Because it would have been through the TV. Mm -hmm. The the phone would have been through the TV. The remote would have been... it, it, It was just shit. Overall, yeah, yeah like, I agree. I've never, like, I've never seen a game like there was not one good aspect of that of in a game. Like SCG for starters, what a shithole, shithole, shithole stadium. Uh, I thought the umpires are pretty shit. Even though we got a fair crack at it, I thought they were just like there was not one free kick that was paid to either side that really changed anything. Okay, yeah. Like, every free kick was paid in the centre of the ground. I don't mm-hmm. reckon any free kick was in front of goal. Like. And usually that makes it exciting and usually it pisses someone off. But, yeah, but it was just shit. And both teams. Oh, fuck me. (laughs) Fuck me. Seriously? What a grand final rematch. Fuck. I hate both teams don't make finals. That is the worst fucking performance I've ever seen at goal kicking. Goal Mm. kicking. How hard is it, Tricky? I don't know. Do they oh. see two big posts? Um, yeah, clearly, clearly. I clearly. swear that Hickey has nightmares. He cannot kick in front of goal. Oh, I'm not expecting Hickey to kick oh, it off. Oh, but it, it, five meters, <laughs> five meters on a five degree angle. Come on! I reckon even this bloke could do that. And under yes, and under tens could barrel it through the centre. Dangerous deal would get that. Covered. Oh no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. Oh, but yep, second draw of the season. But do you want to talk about the next point because that that was something that. Oh you yes, touch and on. I'm very happy of this too. Even though Jim Steins is a phenomenal player, Brownlow medalist, read his book as well. Uh, Zach good Dewey, book, isn't it? a very good book. Zach Dewey equals Jim Steins' game record for Irish player uh, for the most Irish player games. Most games as an Irish player. as an Irish player. Sorry, uh, 264 games, and then next pass, week, yeah, we played North. Do you see, see his comments on it? 
Yeah. He's a bit embarrassed. Yeah, he is. Yeah, so. I mean, Jim St- oh, if, if I'm going to pick a player, it's Jim Stein's over to him. Jim, oh, yeah. Jim well, Stein's he's got, just he's, had he, it all. He's got the brown low. And to be honest, I only think Tui's been a really good – like, he, I reckon he's a really good player now. Yep. But yeah, – He talk, wasn't much at Carlton. At Carlton. No, no, no. He wasn't great. No, no, no. I didn't think he was that great at yeah. all. Only – But when he came to Geelong, I, I think he's actually surprised me a bit. Yeah, he has. All the Ar- – do you notice all the Irishmen, even though – um, I know they play Gaelic football. They have a thumping kick. Even, yes, that. But even yeah. though they play Gaelic football, that is with a round ball. But not only a thumping kick, they are elite kicks of the footy. Oh, Yeah. All of them. It's I reckon it's how like the action of how they kick with the Gaelic football. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, it's not even a ga- it's not even a football. It's just a netball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But like it's it's great. Like oh, Mark O'Connor. Yeah, he's okay. Um, but I'm talking like Connor McKenna's. He, he's oh, a good, he's yeah. a really good kick of the footy. Absolutely. And Zach Tui is a great kick too, but a massive kick, mm. huge. And same with Jim Steins. He was huge. Oh, like I didn't watch any like. Proper games, but like watching his highlights, he was a huge. Mar- kick. Marty Clark, when he was at Collingwood for a bit, he was yeah, a good kick. Yeah, massive kick. They all, they all seem, they all play him off half back because because of they, the way they oh, use the absolutely. ball. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but that was a game not to remember, mm-hmm. and we won't speak of that ever again. Saturday night, uh, Adelaide v North. This uh, is the day game, Matt. Oh, was it Saturday? Oh, no. oh, it was. Sorry. Uh, day game. Uh, Adelaide v North. Uh, 21-12, 138, defeating uh, North Melbourne, Adelaide. Uh, 11-6, 72 by 66 points. Uh, goal kickers for the Crows. We had Rankin with a five, four, Fogarty with four, Walker with three, Keys with two, O'Brien with two, Pedler with two, Phil Thorpe with two, and Murphy with one. A lot of multiple goal kickers mm, there. That's good to see too. That is very good to see. And accuracy, 21-12. And 11-6 is not too bad either. Not bad either. Then with the Suvalaki with three, Thomas with two, Stevens with two. Thomas. Hey. Taron Thomas was good. He was good. Stevenson with two. Zerha, Simpkin, Scott, and LDU with one. That was his return game, wasn't it? It was. Would you like to take the disposals? Yeah, so disposals for Adelaide. Leading the way was Sloan with 30, but this guy, two these next two guys had a really good game, so I thought you could um, pick between who was best on. I'd probably side with the second person, but Keyes had 29, two goals, nine score enrollments, and seven tackles. Dawson... We keep talking about him, but how can you not? When he has 28, 11 inside 50s, 8 tackles, 636 metres gained. And this player I thought was very, very good as well, playing off the halfback line. Mitch Hinge had 26 with 10 marks, 12 intercepts, 9 rebound 50s, and 668 metres gained. While your rising star, Sheasel, had 31. Mm. Uh, Isaac Rankin, how good has that pickup been? So five goals he had, 17 disposals, 8 score runs, and 6 marks. He's... He's been worth every cent, if you ask me. Uh, just about. Just about. And he's done it quite well for the Crom as well. And another one, Riley O'Brien, or Brun, uh, dominated in the Ruck. 52 hitouts. How many? 52. Oh, Jesus. 15 disposals to add on top. Two goals. One. Oh, you put the one there. Yeah, two goals, one, yep. Two goals, one, and we don't worry about the <laughs> uh, nine score involvements and six clearances. That is a game by Ruckman. Mm-hmm. That is a great game. Yep, it's really oh, good. There. That is fantastic. And oh, a couple of fines we got here. Oh. Josh Worrell received a fifteen hundred dollar fine, which can be go to around thousand of an early plea for engaging in a melee slash wrestle in the first quarter. While your boy Tex Walker has Ooh. been offered three thousand dollar fine which can be a 2,000 with an early plea for rough conduct to Taron Thomas in the third quarter, which was graded as intentional contact, low impact, and body contact. Oh while right. injuries have uh, injuries are butt with a concussion. That's all right, Tex. That's okay. We like a bit of wrestle. We mm. like that. Uh, next game, we have Western Bulldogs and Fremantle Bulldogs. Another straight kicking here. 16-6, 102 mm. defeated. Frio 11-7, 73 by 29 points. Hugo Hagen with the four, Waitman and Norton with two, Lob, Dale, English, Hannon, McRae, McNeil, uh, Bontepalli and Williams. Walters and Amy Spokes kicked four for the Dockers, 
while Darcy, Schultz and Frederick kicked one each. Bonton Pally had 27 and nine clearances and Dale had 25, while McRae had 24, nine clearances, eight tackles and seven score involvements. For the Dockers, you had Sarong with 38, 10 clearances, seven tackles. Uh, Henry had 33. Cox, massive game for him, had 31 oh, yeah. down the back line with 13 marks, 10 intercepts at 87% efficiency, while Brayshaw also had 29 with seven tackles. Now, talking points, Hulky. Uh, Freo hit the front uh, seven minutes into the last quarter. And then the Bulldogs just ran away with it, kicked the next five goals. Yes. Um, yeah, I don't see much with Fremantle uh, when it comes to uh, inside the Victorian state. Okay, yep. Yep. Um, and where are they sitting now? Freo? Yeah, they about... They're outside the eight. They're outside the eight, yep. but... Are they in the chase? Uh, they're 11th. 11th. So Essendon are 8th on 32 points and yep. Freo are 11th on 28 points. Yes. So that's one game away from being in the 8. One game away. Yep. Would you consider them making it? Like, could you I, see it? So looking at the teams here now, I think if any teams are going to come in out of these two, out of anyone can come in from 9th to, thir- ninth to 12th probably. So that's Geelong, GWS, Freo. I've written off Gold Coast now, but just for this equation, they're in. Yep. I think the only ones that can come in are possibly Geelong. Yep. And GWS. Okay. I think they've they've found a good run of form. Yes. I think they've got five in a row now, but they're the ones I think they're going to take the next talking point. Uh, Sean Darcy won the ruck battle against Tim English with 50 hitouts. How many? 50. Oh, jeez. 18 disposals on top. With six marks and six scoring moments. To what go along is with a goal. Ruckman round. To go along with a goal as well. Oh, my God. And then, oh, no, Cody Waitman offered a $1,500 fine or 1000 with an early plea for misconduct to Brennan Cox in the second quarter. That's all right. We, we like a little bit of a wrestle. We like see the one wrestle. At, see the one at Frankston? <laughs> <laughs> it was just uh, three on Ginevitt. Oh, my God. To be fair, what about well, poor old Ash? Yeah, but to, yeah, Johnson. Yeah, I know that was funny. But to be fair, you know, with the Ginnivan one, he had a right to be mad. Oh, of course, the whistle had gone a good five seconds before that, and they still proceeded with the tackle. And then three of them are just grabbing him. It's like yeah. oh. I don't talking about Ginnivan. I don't see how he finds his way back into this team. Oh, well, who who spot is he taking? Please tell me, because he's not taking Bobby Hill's spot. He's not taking Jamie Elliott's spot. Who spot is he taking? It's great. Because well, Mistay's got to come back in. Johnson's going to struggle to get back in. I'd say my check spot. <laughs> Johnson's going to struggle to get back in when Mistay's fit. Yeah. Because that's he's another tall forward. Yep. Because then you've got Hoskin out. They can go through there. And they're liking um, playing Harvey Harrison. They're liking him. And Reef McKinnon's kicked six on the weekend in the VFL. So, Ginnivan's going to find it tough, I think. I reckon but so. But do you want to take the... Oh, you take you sure? it. You take okay. it. Come on. Gold Coast versus Collingwood. And as you quoted, you did go for Collingwood. But did. what did you quote it as? What did I quote it as? A danger game. Oh, it was a danger game. I did think it was. Gold Coast yeah. 5 twi- <laughs> I, To be honest, I'm not even going to lie. I thought so too. Yep. But Gold Coast 5 12, 42, defeated by Collingwood 18 12, 120, 78 points. Elliot kicked five while Hill and Frampton played as more of a forward until Howe went down and he went back. So there's the versatility I'm liking and flexibility. I'm liking Frampton this season. I thought it was a good pickup. So Hill and Frampton with the two. Nick Dacos, Hoskin Elliott, Cox, Markov, Noble, Lipinski, Adams, Camerons and Chris all with one. For the Suns, you had Ainsworth and Rao both kicking two. And Oa kicked one for the Suns. For the Suns, Anderson... Just does like he does every week. He had 35 with seven clearances. And Flanders had 27. And Powell down back had 27 with 12 rebound 50s, eight marks, and 732 metres gained. Now, I haven't wrote his disposals for some 36. reason. But he's 36 in it. I thought so. Nick Dacos. Just listen to some of these stats, to put some of the stuff you can crit- critique him on that. So he's had 36. Oh, no. Oh, no. But not just that. He's laid 10 tackles. And he's oh, well, had, and well, he's, well, 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 what tackles we talking here? He's like 10 Are tackles. Are we talking a flop? Oh, he's talking Are tackles. we talking a flop? Are we just laying on top of the pile no, on top? He, he's like 10 tackles. Oh, okay. 10 score involvements. Okay. But the big one here is I don't think people were expecting this one. Eight clearances. I expect it. 
But, like, they, they said, call him about this outside game and that. But, like, if you go with it, he had more... Is unco- it a clearance if someone handballs it to you and you're boom? Or is that a clearance to the person who handballs it? Depends how far it goes, I think. Oh, okay. But I think... Well, if, I mean, if he's I, on the run, if he gets I think, handball, um, good on him. His contested and toughness is actually going a bit underrated just because he played a bit off that halfback. Like, he still had 13. Like, 23 of them, don't mind me, like, was still uncontested. But he had 13 contested and 10 tackles. So I think yep. him coming in the midfield, he's showing he can, has a bit of toughness. And when Tagoli comes back, what are they going to do? Because there is no way Dacos can go back to halfback, is there? Oh, God. Um, See, that's that's the dilemma they have. Not only do they going to have trouble with Ginevan getting back in when McStay and that, but what are they going to do when Tagoli comes back in? Because Penelbury can go to halfback, but he's having some good influence in the midfield. Rest him. <laughs> Nick Dacos and Penham are um, linking up so well together. So it's going to be interesting what they do. Because I don't want to see Dugowie playing half forward because I'm I'm now convinced Dugowie is a full-time midfielder. I don't know about you. He's a Petrarca-type oh, player. Yeah, he's a bigger body. Yeah, yeah so I'm like convinced that. now. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. Like, does Taylor Adams' spot come into jeopardy? Someone like that, if you know what I mean. Um, I mean, Taylor Adams is a walking soft tissue. He is. But, um, um, I'm actually liking his season this year, though, with a bit of f- playing a bit more forward, switching with Tom Mitchell. I think he's lying some <laughs> forward pressure. So I mean, how you beat us in round one? Gee whiz, that was a very good yeah, game. Yeah, so anyways, Mitchell 30 with eight score involvements. Noble had 30 as well. Penelbury 27 and six clearances. And Josh Jagos had 27. Now... Caroline Wilson broke the news last night as well of some insight she's found. But I've also said it's very unlikely the Suns will make the top eight now. What does this mean for Stuart Jew? Well, I mean, if the guy that usually sits on my left, um, he would say, and I quote, uh, he'd be getting the lemon's ass. I remember him saying that, but I don't remember him saying Ken Hingley to Richmond, is what I'm saying. Oh. Must have missed her, but yeah. Oh. I mean, Hardwick up there would be a great move, but I've heard Tim, strong rumours Chris Scott. I was about to say that. Tim Watson yeah. said, would you ask Chris Scott the question? Well, why Chris Scott leave? That's yeah. my question. Yeah, I know, but would, would you ask Chris Scott the question? Because they obviously want a coach like that. Mm. So is there a... Any danger in picking up the phone and going, hi, what's Chris Scott's status like at Geelong right now? Is he happy? Would he consider a move away from Geelong up to the Gold Coast? I mean, with his slick back hair and that oh, that very there's, there's no straight cut beard and he loves a tan, I reckon he'd love it up at the Gold Coast, old Chrissy Scott. There's no danger in asking the question. Oh, absolutely not. So, but yeah, what I don't think Stuart Drew gets past this year. I honestly thought he was until this game. Don't know about you. They don't find anyone he'll stay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, did you see Jamie Elliott's goal? No, I did not. Oh, the kick, a bit of the um, kept it in play and then kicked it back over his head. Like ran around the goalpost, kept it in play and kicked it back over his head. Jeez. But uh, one I've written down here is I think goes a little bit underrated. John Noble. I reckon he's seriously underrated as a player. Mm. What, what do you do? Do you notice? What do you think of John Noble when he plays? I reckon this year has been a very standout season for John Noble and his dash off half back and his ball use. Uh, I'll just say, I mean, I don't watch many Collingwood games unless they're very close, and just nearly every week, <laughs> nearly every week. And um, I see John Noble as that just that sort of, um, just that little bit of an out. Like I'll see him get him sometimes, but just that little bit of an outsider. He's our distributor. Very good use of the footy. Yeah, very slick. Mm. So I I reckon he's seriously underrated and he's starting to get a bit more props though as well. Let's just say Collingwood's going all the way. You're making it to the big dance, but I don't know the result. Yeah, okay. You're you're making it to the dance, but I don't know where, who, I don't know who's coming in and I don't know what the result will be. I'm not going to say you're winning the whole thing because knowing 2018, which I know we shouldn't speak of, that was an unexpected result. I hate to live in the past, (laughs) but just on that. We can talk about it now. I oh, know. What have I caused? Did you think it was a block? Nah. Did you con- did you do you honestly say of your chest you don't think Mano was blocked? Nah. Or are you just saying that because you know it's gonna tick me off? No, nah, it wasn't a block. He was trying to go for the mark on Rioli. And then he came and then Ryan came in on the side. 
next game. <laughs> he knows it was nah, a block. A block. <laughs> Next All game. Right, what next a game, game this was. City night. Uh, Essendon v Port Adelaide. Wow. Just wow. Uh, Essendon 10 14 74 and defeated by Port Adelaide 11 12 78 and none other. And a goal after the siren. What a goal it was, too. What Just on goal. that. Where does that rank with some goals after Siren you've seen? Is it up there? I'm going to be biased here, but I personally would take Elliott's over that against oh, Essendon. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was on the boundary, for God's sake. And um, If you want to go iconic, you'd, as much as it hurts me to say, Dom it's Sheed. Dom Sheed. But the difficulty, I'd say... That's not after the Siren. I know, it's not. Yeah, true. Uh, but... Uh, Ali, most, I'd say Ali. Most iconic uh, goal after the siren. Billy. Was, no, <laughs> most iconic. Most iconic was round twenty one, two thousand and twelve. The Tomahawk <laughs> from sixty out to defeat the Hawks one hundred and eighteen to one hundred and sixteen. Yes, I know every single detail to that. He kicked six goals and he had about eighteen touches and it was his best game until. Round 19, 2016, which he had 29 touches and seven goals, one against Carlton. And it was a great game. Uh, anyways, moving on. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, goal kickers for the Bombers. We had Langford with three, Carlton with th- Oh, Carlton. Cal- <laughs> Langford with three, Corwell with three, Guelphy with two, and then the package, Laverde and Martin all with one. And then the Brownlow medalist, uh, Rosie, with Tell three. you what. Oh, here we go. It's not a terrible call that it's you said. Not. But, but I not, copped it, some flack for but it. But he's not going to pull the most in his team. I'll say that now. But is pulling more than him. We'll see. Uh, Rosie with three. Uh, Burn Jones with one. Finn Lason with one. Dixon with one. Narkel with one. Burton, Farrell, Butters, Houston all with one. Uh, disposals for the Bombers. We had Merritt with 31 and Parrish with 29 and seven tackles to Parrish as well. And then Houston, for Port Adelaide, 30, we had Houston 31. I think it was. 32. 32 with 13 intercepts as well. And then Farrell with 25 and 88% efficiency with that. And then Butters with 25, eight score involvement, seven inside 50s and 635 metres gain on top of that talking points trick. So obviously we talked about the game winning goal, but back on Houston, he's seriously pushing his case to put on his first All-Australian jacket, I believe. Oh. Would you agree with that? I, I personally would say he's had a better season than Tom Stewart. I reckon Tom Stewart's had a bit of a down a year to his standards. Oh, to his standards, yeah. yes, but he's still in contention. It, no, he's in contention, but at the moment, I think I might have Houston a little bit, just for the impact on a game Houston has. Oh, that's very. I mean, I'm being biased. Yeah, here, you are. But yeah, like, yeah. I mean, oof, oof. Uh, and back to back wins at the G for Port. They're yeah. showing they can do it over here. Yes. Wow. Get uh, to the big dance. Sunday, Hawthorne Carlton. Hawthorne 7 10 52, defeated by Carlton 17 10, 112, 60 points. Uh, Green, Bruce Lewis with two. McDonald with the one. Kerno and Martin with three. Mackay, Cunningham, Chera with the two. Akers, Fogarty, Doherty, Owens. Oh, sorry. And Silvani. Uh, I'm happy to skip this game if you'd like. Why would you like to skip this game? There's not much to talk about, I don't think. <laughs> Uh, Hawthorne didn't score a goal in the first half. Mm-hmm. I reckon that's pathetic. And I reckon Sam Mitchell's on the way out too. You calling it now? I reckon he's on the way out. Yeah, uh, Holty, I'm just going to warn you a bit here. I know you don't like some of the comments you get on TikTok. I know. That's going to be clipped, mate. No. <laughs> Why do I get clipped for the shit <laughs> things I say? That's clipped for sure. If Stuart Jew is on the way out, why isn't Sam Mitchell? Why not? Ooh, ooh, that's, it's, we'll, we'll see what the people say out there. That's not being clipped, actually. Oh, let me have a think. 
No. No, you are not taking the piss out of me. Um, I'm not taking the piss, mate. Just, I just... Re- well, well, I mean, what, what has Sam Mitchell done at Hawthorne? What's he... Like, really think about it. What has he done? He's trying to rebuild a young list. Yeah, same as Stuart Jew. Somewhat young. Stuart Jew's been in it for longer. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. that's proved me wrong, yep. Hawthorne's in a rebuild. Yeah. Gold Coast weren't expected to be in a rebuild. They were expected to play finals. Well, I mean, don't clip it. Please don't, <laughs> please don't clip it. But, I mean, I reckon, I know they're in a rebuild, but I reckon he, Sam Mitchell needs help. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I, I regret saying that he's on the way out. That was just a little bit of a heat in the moment there and just to spark everyone it's okay. up. It's okay, Tristan. But I reckon he needs help. I reckon Damien Hardwick. Sticks and stones, mate. Sticks Damien and Hardwick stones. assistant coach. Sticks and stones, mate. Why Sticks does Damien, Damien Hardwick doesn't have to go head coach? I reckon go assistant coach Hawthorne. Help Sam Mitchell. Mm, okay. I reckon join the Hawthorne coaching board and I reckon him and Sam Mitchell, I'd like to see it. Hmm, interesting. But if not, Sam Mitchell's on the way out. <laughs> Chit <Chit-chit> views. <laughs> it's on the way out. Uh, Melbourne GWS, another dis- uh, disgraceful kicking from oh. Melbourne. 5-15, uh, 45, defeated by GWS 7-5, 47. Pickett, Bowie, uh, Bowie, sorry. Grundy, Melksham, Langdon all kicked one, while Green and Kelly kicked two. Brown, Cummings and O'Halloran. Viney was huge with the Ds with 41, oh, 10 yeah. inside, 50s, 7 clearances and 7 tackles. Wachaka also had 34, but kicked 0 goals 4. So that that's let that game down. And Hunter also had 30. Uh, Tom Green had 38, Canelio 30, and Harry Himmelberg had 28 with 11 rebound 50s and 606 metres gained, while Kelly had 26 to go along with his two goals and kick the game-winning goal. Oh, yeah. And wasn't it a shocking game? Like, you, Alice Springs, aren't you meant to be, like, the warmest place and, like, the driest place in the whole of Australia? Mm-hmm. It was pissing down. Yep. And talk about weird moments of the weekend. Did you see the f- the nearly 25-minute take-through of the road train? Did you mm, see it? No, I didn't actually. Channel 7 went through a 25-minute talk through of a road train that was parked next to the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the, I don't know who the bloke was, but he was talking about how many litres of fuel was in it, what the PSI was on the tyres, and where, how many gears it had. Who gives a shit? We switch it on to Channel 7 to watch a football and talk about lorries. <laughs> Christ! Oh, and, uh, yeah, inaccurate demons. West Coast, St Kilda, Holty. Um, West, yeah, West Coast St Kilda at uh, twelve five seventy seven accuracy. Oh, C C, and a little bit of a scare to St Kilda as well with twelve thirteen inaccurate eighty five defeating West Coast by eight points over in WA. Uh, goal kickers for West Coast we had Merrick. Is it Merrick? Merrick, yeah. Marich with two. So why is it? It's Marrick or Marich? I don't know. It's Marich. one of them. It's definitely Marrick. Marrick with two. I think it is Hewitt with two. Oscar Allen. Is he not like another upcoming like great forward? Yeah. Oh my god. Do you reckon he stays at West Coast and finds an, or finds another team? That's something I wanted to bring up. Clip that. <laughs> clip. Clip that. Clip that and put it on there. Does Oscar Allen stay at West Coast or does he go to another team? And. If and he does, is he a great forward coming up into the near future? And if he does, drop your comments what you believe he would be worth to get out of West Coast. What they, they'd have to give up? Six fifty. Actually, no. Keep going. Uh, eight fifty. Yeah, yeah you're, 8 now 50, you're more sorry. talking, more in that I was region. Talking about Harry Hummelberg. Yeah. yeah, more talking there. Uh, Cripps, Williams, Darling, uh, Bruschelli, and also Williams and Long, all with one for West Coast. And then your man. Mitchie Owens. Mitchie Owens with four. And then Calamari with two. Uh, Cam and Edie, that is, sorry, guys. Calamari. <laughs> uh, Butler with two. Higgins, Wood, Gresham, and King, all with one as well. And then disposals for the Eagles. We had Hearn with 30. And then, oh, my God, Witherden. 
Yep. Oh, well done, well, mate. Withered in. Yep. Withered in. Uh, 29, Shuey with 28, and Duggan with 27 as well. And then for the Saints, you had Sinclair with 30, Marshall with 20. 26 with 34 hitouts and eight clearances to add on top of that. And Crouch, 26 as well. Talking points. No, no, no. Don't skip over that. Oh, what did I do? Oh, 17 tackles. Have a look at those tackles. Oh, mate. 17. I don't give a shit about defence. Oh, well, if that was Rory Laird, you'd be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, because he was robbed of a Brownlow. Oh, here we go. He was robbed of a Brownlow. Unbelievable. And now he's not even the best midfielder in his team. Oh, who polled more votes than him last year? Wasn't it Walker? Yeah, I think it was. Oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. And at this point, I think Dawson polls more than him. I think Walker polls more than him. And I think Rankin might poll more than him. That's a big call. Mm. But it's not bad call. All righty. So, talking points. We had West Coast captain Luke Shuey set the tone in the first quarter by racking a monstrous eight tackles. That is a big word for you. Um, what, I mean, what, the, Shuey, what does that mean? What? That is big words for you. That is big words for you. Monstrous. Monstrous. Uh, Shuey still has it. Oh, he fade away late. I oh, know, he fades away, but he, I reckon he still has it. Still has it. Uh, West Coast kicked four consecutive goals in the second quarter to take the lead to 31 points. I reckon that's the first time West Coast has led anything. Other than the one win they've got this season. Do they? Do they have a win? They beat JOS. Oh, my God. I completely forgot about it. That's how much I know. Uh, Mitch Owens, the difference with four goals from 14 disposals. I mean, you talk about him. You talk about expand. He, he's unreal. Like the fact he's realistically a midfielder, a big body midfielder who's playing as a high half forward, which is one of the hardest positions on the ground. He's got it all. He can take a big mark. He can kick. He kicks goals. He runs hard. He pressures. Is Lee Montagna right? No. <laughs> no Brown low Mitch Owens. Oh, God, no. Brown low Mitch Oh, Owens. God, no. No? Oh. God. And then for your injuries, we had Darling. My palm wasn't laid. <laughs> Darling with a shoulder battle with a concussion and Hill with a knee. Team of the week. And this is your segment. Here we go. Okay, okay. Team of the week. I have already recorded a bit of it to clip uh, on the socials. So, but if you're just listening to here or watching oh, on the YouTube, oh geez, here we go. Clip. So, here we, <laughs> here we go. Uh, my full back line, Dan Houston, Brennan Cox, and Mitch Hinge. <laughs> Half back line is Harry Himmelberg, Noah Bolter, and John Noble. Cross my centre line is Liam Henry, Jack Viney, and Lockie Hunter. My half forward line is Isaac Rankin, Darcy Fogarty, and Connor Rosie. My full forward line is Jamie Elliott, Joe Danaher, and Jamara Eugle Hagen. My midfield with Rowan Marshall in the ruck and Lockie Neal and Nick Dacos. My interchange is Ben Keys, Taylor Walker, Hugh McCluggage, Caleb Sarong, and my sub is Kitty Coleman. Any any disagreements there, mate? Is Nick Dacos in there? Yeah, he's Rover. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yep. All right, now here we go. Strap yourself in. Here we go. This is all I care about. It's been a while since I've done some rolling all Australian squad. So that means there's a lot of changes. Let's start with the full back line. First of all, Here we go. we've got a change in the back yeah, pocket. Yeah, I know. Hey, Tom Stewart. Yeah, know. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Welcome in, Dan Houston. Holy shit. Harris Andrews comes into full back. Oh, no. He was in the back pocket. Oh, no. And uh, unfortunately, this was a tough one, but Cal Milky. See you later. Oh, no. In comes Charlie Ballard. The half back line stays the same with Nick Dacos, Darcy Moore, Jack Sinclair. Oh, of course that wouldn't change. <laughs> um, Black and white jumpers. Okay. My centre line, Josh Dacos in the wing. Yeah. Marcus Bontepelli in the centre. Yeah. And onto the wing, taking Zach Butter's spot on the wing, is Nick Martin. Ha! Oh. That's sympathy. <laughs> no, that it's is not. Ball, that is sympathy for Connor Murphy. <laughs> no, it's not. That is sympathy. My half forward. Who did you take out? 
butters. No, I've just, I've just, oh, just wait, just wait, sympathy. just wait, just wait, just wait. And then uh, Rankin goes into half forward, and he takes, uh, I believe, it was Finlayson spot in the starting lineup. Yeah. Uh, Joe Danaher at centre half forward still. Okay. And Pachaka on the flank. Yeah. My full forward line. Uh, my pockets stay the same with Toby Green and Charlie Cameron. Yeah. My full forward out Charlie Kerno. In. The big Texan Taylor Walker. Yeah, I like that. My ruckman is still Tim English. On watch. On watch. On watch. After the, that week's performance. Reese Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Jordan Dawson stays in the starting midfield. Okay. Yes. Tom Green, very stiff, but you're out of the squad. Taking your spot in the starting midfield is Zach Butters. Oh, so from a wing, okay. that's why I said just yeah. hold your horses, all right? Just hold. But still, Nick Martin. Sympathy! No. Okay. Into the squad, taking – whose spot did he take? Uh, taking Bailey Smith's spot. Cause this was ages ago. Bailey Smith was on a high at this point. Yeah, okay. Uh, Connor Rosie. Uh, Taranto keeps his spot on the bench. Finn Layson goes from flank to the bench. Kale Sarong keeps his spot on the bench. And last time I did this was when Jordan Nagoli was running hot. Obviously, hasn't played for a while. So he goes out. In come the Red Dog, Mason Redmond, oh, as my sub. Oh, here we go. Here any, we go. Any questions, mate? Oh, yeah, I've got one. <laughs> here we go. I've got one. How much ass did you lick out of Connor Murphy? <laughs> no, Mason Redmond's had a really good year, but I couldn't put Redmond over Ballard or Houston. <laughs> Sympathy! No! If it was sympathy, I would have started Redmond. There's not one Geelong man in that side. Do you blame me? Not really. So my swaps are Stewart out, Houston in, Andrews from the back pocket to fullback. Uh, Wilkie, question. Yep. Brian Myers? No. Wilkie, uh, I haven't even considered him, to be fair. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I haven't even considered him. No. Wilkie, leading Wilkie. in assists, leading in score involvements. I haven't even considered him. Just kick oh goals, my. mate. Kick some oh. goals. Uh, Wilkie, oh. so you're gonna you're gonna sit there and tell me Grime Myers had a better season than Isaac Rankin? Oh, I mean, like goals. <laughs> I mean, like everyone these days just looks at the goals. Like, look how they're set up. It's a forward's pleasure how they're mm-hmm. set up. But then, uh, so Wilkie goes out. Ballard comes in. Uh, Zach Butt is. Swaps with Nick Martin. Nick Martin goes to the wing. Uh-huh. Jeremy Cameron comes out. Oh, I didn't hear you say that. I forgot to mention that's that, a, sorry. That's a great call. Isaac Rankin takes his spot. Jeremy Cameron has been flat as a pancake. Kerno, Charlie Kerno out. Literally. <laughs> Taylor Walker in. Green out. Butters in. Smith out. Rosie in. Finlayson to the bench. And Dugowie out. Redman in. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm going with so far. There's not much to go. I think that half-back line, I know... Set. Solid. But Bring that cemented. At the same time, Dacos and Sinclair are playing a lot more midfield time now. Okay. But I feel like I'm convinced that they'll get there because that's where they started the season, if that makes sense. Right. So I think that's set, that half-back line. Sinclair, more Nick Dacos. Would you... Do you have any disagrees? More Sinclair. might be the only question. Sinclair, more Dacos. Um... I want to think of anyone. Uh, not Steve May. Not Jack. May. And my full forward line would, I reckon, would nearly be set. Green, Walker, Cameron. Cameron might be the only question mark. Oh. Was that, is this Charlie Cameron you're talking about? Oh. Um, I reckon more will be set. I reckon Moore's a, you know, he's been a very good intercept mark. you got to have one of them in there. Um... Oh, let's. Um, I mean, forward line can change each week. It could be big bags, and someone brings it up, and it looks very good. Yeah. Now I have taken it on myself to do this. Phillips, great grab. He's been so impressive this yeah. bloke. First quarter, Phillips off the ground, goal. Oh, the big goal. Oh, good tackle. On that occasion by Phillips, aggressive tackle it was by Phillips. I've got two players in mind. You've taken over his segment. 
Do you want me to just ask if it's okay? This is fine. He is going to be ropeable. First player I want to put up. Oh, my God. You are going to get your ass fucking whipped. Is from the Brisbane Lions. I want to put up Kitty Coleman. Okay. 23 to spot. Where's his stats? I had it here. Okay. Kitty Coleman, 23 disposals, 10 marks, 7 intercepts, 19 kicks at 83% efficiency, 7 inside 50s, and 606 metres gained. Yep. The other person I'd like to put up, Grind Myers. Done! We got a winner. <laughs> winner. Grind Myers you, is do, in the Andrew what, Phillips team of the year. Do you have any uh, debates with the players I put up there? I thought they're, they're both. Um, Grind Myers won. Now we've got. Has he had? He has been the best. I'm going to say he's been the best Geelong player. Sorry. Ooh, yeah. it, it 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 is a a good. He's been playing well since. Oh no, I wouldn't say he played well round one or round two. Played well round three. Actually, no, none of them did. Actually, since round four, I think he played. He, I think he played great. Yep. Cameron sort of had the five weeks. Oh my god! Except the two for twenty three, whatever the hell it was, but. Yeah, I reckon Grind's been quite consistent and he's done what he's done. Now, we've gone over the hour mark, just ticked over the hour mark, so I reckon we skip the um, skip through and get to the end. Uh, tips. No, super coach. No, nah, we'll just skip through that. And my powder go. Uh, well, you'll find it next week. I think we'll oh skip that. Oh, my powder. We'll skip through that. Uh, ticked over the hour mark, mate. And, uh, yeah, so. Since when is this a cricket match? When are we relying on Time. Do you want to go for the super coach? Come on, oh, I want to hear okay. my powder went. Well, I took an L. <laughs> oh, fucking Jesus. It stuffed me up, all right? Everyone's taking L's this it week. It stuffed me up. Get it off. wouldn't let me start butters. Oh, no. Do you know how annoying that is? I still would have lost, though. And the fucking person I lost to. Oh, no. Oh. Okay, first off, we got Rolls, 2,348, defeated by Phil in 2,533. Wannabe Cars, 2,180. Defeated by In It To Win It, 2,498. Demonstrative, 2,477. Defeated Mavs Team, 2,359. Froffy's Fray, 1,962. Defeated by Port Adelaide Powder, 2,059. Go the powder. Tricky's Troops, 2,275. Defeated by Coke with Ginevan, 2,513. <laughs> That one hurt. Oh. <laughs> Did you not see him rub it in the group chat? No. Oh, yeah. Bad luck, Trent. Oh, I did it. Oh, I did it. Dallas Domination, 2,226. Oh, I know. He's going to kick your ass because you used all his segment. Defeated <laughs> by 2,402. He said it was fine. Uh, <laughs> Chickadee, 2,514. Defeated Bailey Sniff, 2,126. And Bloods and Crips, 1,714. Defeated by Calculations Go Hard, 2,000. Now, as we go to the rankings... Tight ladder. It is a very tight ladder. All right. In the first place, we've got four left. Noah's team. That's a great name. Second place is Zach's Wybangers in it to win it. Yep. Third place is Dallas Domination. Fourth place is Riley Worsling's Riles. Fifth place is Sam with Filling. Sixth place is Paul with Demonstrative. Seventh place is Tricky's Troops. Eighth place is last year's winner, Mavs Team. Oh, Maverick. Ninth position is Connor. Yeah. With Coke and your Port Adelaide Powder is actually in 14th position, the third uh, last. Ah, shit. <laughs> Any um, words of advice and a bit of encouragement to go out to our fellow I haven't, t- I haven't touched Supercoach since round six, Mate, so I've you, got nothing. You're, you're, you look like you're on the Port Adelaide Powder bandwagon. So any... um. Encouragement words you'd like to send out to a uh, listener, Will? Do better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do better. Fair enough, too. Shit out, Will. Anyways. um, I mean, who do you have in his team? Let's, 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 have, let's have a sneak let's peek. Have a, let's actually have a sneak peek. We go to game day. Let's see where he's gone bad. Here we go. Oh, where's he gone bad? Let's have a look. He didn't ta- if he didn't touch it, then that's fair. Let's he- have a look. Well, he won this week. Yes, good. He captained uh, Nick Dacos. Great. That got him 298. Oh, great. He had Josh Dunkley. That got him 107. Yes. 
Connor McKenna scored as an emergency with 72. Yep. Errol Gordon, 124. Very good. Tom Livratore, 121. Very good. George Wardlow, 73. Good. This is where he let him down. Ben King, 30. He's put a full forward in the <laughs> team. Zach Butters, 109. He Mason Redman, 99. He's put a full forward in the team and he's put King, one of the Kings. He has Will Day, who got 65. Yeah. Uh, Finn Callahan had 89. Yeah. Stephen Cornelio had 86. Yep. Ruben Jimby had 63. Okay. Mateus Filippo was his emergency and he scored 48. Uh, and the common players he had with his other team was Darcy Wilmot, who got 120. Yeah. Tim Tarano, 72. Brennan Cox, 139. Marcus Bonampelli, 114. Jason Horn Francis, 47. Harry Sheasel, 79. And Rowan Marshall, 104. Very good. Who would you get rid of quickly for his team? Ben King, see you later. Fucking <laughs> Ben King gone. Get rid of Ben King. Absolutely. All right, now we move on to the tips. Last week's results. I gave us a half a point for the draw. Fair enough. So I scored seven and a half, yep. which moves me to 89 and a half. You got six and a half, which moves you to 71 and a half. It's going to be a miracle for you to get um, catch up. Let's be real. Absolutely. So would you like to – you've got the AFL app up, actually. Would you like to read out the teams and the games yes. that are going? Thursday night at the G, we have the Tigers v the Swannies. Gonna go with the Tigers. Tigers. And then Friday night under the lid at Marvel, we have the Joggies v the Pies. Pies. Dogs. <laughs> oh, boys. Oh, it's very funny. Uh, and then on a Saturday at one forty-five, up at the Gabba, <laughs> up at the Gabba, we have the Lions v the Eagles. God, this is a danger game. This is going to be an absolute. This is a flogging. danger game for Brisbane. This is going to be a flogging. It's going to be a danger. Brisbane game. are going to flog them. They're going to win by over a hundred again. Um, I'm going to go Brisbane. And I reckon they're going to win by 188. Excuse me? Yep. Oh, Jesus. They're going to win by 188. What's, what's Danaher and Cameron and Hipple kicking? Danaher's going to kick 10. Mm. It would have kicked five. There's 15 right there. Yeah. And what's Cameron kicking? Four behinds. Um, and then 435 on a Saturday. Giant Stadium. Giants. Giants v Hawks. Giants for me. Giants. It will be for me as well then. Back under the lid on a Saturday night at 7.25. Prime time time. Prime time time. St Kilda v the Ds. That's a very big game and I want to attend to that. Demons. D's for me as well. And then 7.40, if you want to flick over the channel on KO or Foxtel or anything like that, it is Port Adelaide at Adelaide Oval v the Suns. Uh, Port Adelaide for me. Danger game. Port Adelaide. And then Sunday, it will be a wet, cold day. Will you be in attendance? Wet, cold day at a 10 past 1, Geelong v North Melbourne, GMHBA. So will you make the drive down? I reckon I will. Oh. I reckon I will, and I'm going to go north. <laughs> Geelong for me. No, I'll go Geelong. Um, 3.20 under the lid again. A lot of games under the lid. Wow. Wee. Uh, Essendon v. The Crom. Uh, oh, that's a good game. Too. Adelaide. You're going to go Crom? Yeah, I am. They pushed us at the G. I'm going to head my bets and go the bo- the Dons. Um, can't say Bombers anymore. The Bombers, no, <laughs> can't say that. Oh, second Sh- guess. Defensive. That. defensive. And then <laughs> 440 <laughs> at the worst turf in Australia, Optus Stadium, Frio v. The Blues. Uh, Frio for me. I reckon Carlton have a chance. Nah, Frio. <laughs> Frio, Frio. Absolutely. Well, there we go. And uh, test predictions, test three. Um, 
Headingley. Oh, I reckon it's going to be the flattest pitch in the world. Um, I reckon England will come back. They'll win this one. Mm-hmm. England will win. Um, player of the match will be... Oh, let's go... Besto. I was thinking that too. I was thinking that. Besto. Best, best I'll make 116 in the first innings and then he'll make a lazy 42 off 17 balls in the second innings. Not out. Full bad ball. And is he holding any catches behind the stumps though? No, he'll drop yeah, 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 that's what I thought too. <laughs> but that's going to do us, guys. Make sure. And he'll get out 116 the exact same way. <laughs> he'll walk out of his crease again. He saw a cheeseburger at the other end. <laughs> Do you know what he should just say? Oh, sorry, I saw another protester. I had to go sort it out. Oh, no. He saw a double cheese. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up, guys. Make sure you like, follow, and subscribe. And make sure to give us a oh, rating as well. Thing before yes, we, go for it, before mate. we finish off, um, Sam Mitchell's going to lose his job. Sam Mitchell's out of it this year. Yes, yeah, so that's at a minute 10 40. <laughs> I'll clip that up. <laughs> <laughs> see out you next job. see you next week guys Sam Mitchell's out of a job <laughs>